Hi, my name's Mary with Sewing for Madison. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we are working from the sewing studio on a few projects. Um, we're gonna be going over some orders that I'm working on and also some new items that I'll be adding to the shop. If this is the first time that we're meeting, Again, my name's Mary with Sewing for Madison. Crafting is my passion and I love helping others learn how fun and easy it can be. Let's go over the projects that we'll be working on today. One of the projects that we'll be finishing up today are going to be making um, these gingerbread uh, stuffed Christmas ornaments. These are some leftover orders from the holiday season. Um, I have people order these all year round, so I make sure that I keep them on my Etsy shop. You can order them with the ribbon or without the ribbon. So we have several of these that we'll be making on the multi-needle machine. Um, I have a Brother PR1000E. It's a little bit older machine, but it gets the job done. So let's head over to that machine and start another ornament. One of the first things that we need to do to get our machine ready is to go ahead and oil this machine. So again, this is a Brother PR1000E. All multi-needle for Brother are set up the same way. The first thing that you're gonna do is take out the bobbin. Make sure that you have plenty of bobbin thread for your project. And then you are gonna oil on the side right here in this crevice. So I like to use these Super Lube oil sticks. Um, they're really cheap, they're only a couple dollars. You can buy them from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description for these. And we're just gonna drop a little bit of oil right there. One drop is plenty. And then if there's any loose threads or anything, we can clean those up at this time. Pop your bobbin in, make sure that it clicks into place, shut your drawer, and now we are be uh, ready to begin the project. So here I'm using um, my four x four hoop, and I wanna show you guys a little trick. Um, these are the same on both sides. And when you're doing a project, it can be easy when you're taking the hoop in and out to put it back on the machine the wrong way. So this is just a little simple trick that I have. I just put a sticker on one side, which is always the right side for me because I'm right-handed. And that way, when I am putting the hoop back onto the machine, I always make sure that that's on the right so I don't accidentally put it in backwards and mess up the entire project. So I have this hooped with a cutaway 2.5 ounces of stabilizer, just one single sheet, and that's what we'll be using for this cookie project. So I'm gonna pop this in. And the first step in this design is the placement stitch for the ribbon. Okay, now we're gonna remove this from the hoop and we're gonna go over to my workspace. And I have a couple different projects going on here, so don't mind my mess. This is a, a stuffy I'm working on, so we'll go over that in a little bit. Um, and you can see that it left a little mark here. So I'm gonna tape my ribbon down right on top of that mark, just like that. And then I'm gonna grab my piece of felt, put it right over top. And then I'm gonna use blue taper, painter's tape to secure this ribbon onto the hoop. I found that if I don't do this little step right here, when the machine is moving back and forth, it will catch, this, this little loop will catch on the presser foots uh, for all the different needles and it gets hung up and then the machine errors out and it's a big mess. So this is what I like to do for uh, projects that have things hanging outside of the hoop. Make sure that you secure them and tape them down. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and st uh, stitch out the next steps. Thank you. 
This next step here is I'm placing an applique piece of fabric here. So I'm just going to lay this down and then do the next step. Nope, that was my fault. So I didn't secure this very uh, down very well and it caught on that little presser foot part here. So I need to retape that. I'm gonna go ahead and trim around the edge here. Okay, that is all trimmed up and my next um, step is going to be another applique. We're making a Santa cookie. So here comes his beard. I'm going to show you how I use my applique scissors to trim this out. Okay, so I'm using a set of curved applique scissors. I'll put a link down in the description for this as well. Um, what we need to do here is trim around the outside and then also trim this middle portion here. So I'm gonna try to not have my hands in the way, um, but it is a little bit tricky. So. I have to pull the fabric to get it started and then once I get it started, you'll see. So you wanna make sure that you don't cut too close to the edges of the stitching. I just like to keep rotating it around Okay, and you have a couple choices for the center uh, piece. You can either just stick your scissors in there a little bit, make a little tiny cut, or you can use a steam ripper, uh, seam ripper. Uh, I prefer just to do a little bit of edge of my scissors to start making that slit and then go from there. So you have to be careful not to cut that under layer and go right through the middle of your project. So take your time with this step. You can use small little straight scissors with this as well if that's what you have. It's just a little bit more difficult and it's also easy if your applique scissors have smaller little straight points like mine do here. You can really get into the fine details and make the best cuts with a pair of curved that are smaller at the ends. Okay, so there we go. Now we are gonna stitch out the face features and all the little details on here. So we're gonna head back to the machine. the details of the cookie ornament are finished. Now I'm going to add a piece of fabric to the back side and then secure that down and stuff it.
Okay, the back is all secure. There is a little small opening here, which I am going to stuff all of this with polyfiber. I like to use a dowel rod when I'm stuffing. It makes it super easy. And you just wanna take a little tiny bit at a time. If you do too much, it will be really lumpy. And get it all the way to the bottom. Since this is a in the hoop stuffed ornament, you want to make sure that you don't overstuff your project. Okay, I have everything stuffed here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little piece of scotch tape here to hold that down, and we're gonna head back to the machine to sew up that last little part. That project is finished and we can mark another cookie completed. Now this particular customer ordered um, two of these cookies. So while I have this design loaded in the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and make another one. Here is one of my old machines. This is a Brother PE770. You've seen me use this machine on a lot of different videos. I'm gonna be making uh, pizza toppings with this machine. Uh, yesterday I got done with a set of black olives and I have a couple pizza orders right now so I need to make the remaining toppings for that order. Before I get started with the machine and what I do to get it started, um, I just wanna pan up and show you guys something that my eight-year-old son made me. So for Christmas this year, he thought it was really cool to just make this sign for mom. So I have to give props out to my eight-year-old son, uh, Tyler. He spent a lot of time and a lot of hard work making this sign uh, for my logo, so little mom pride there. Don't mind my mess for all my threads there. I have not hung my thread racks up yet over here on the side of the studio, so we just have to deal with a little bit of chaos. The first thing that I do when I come down to do my machines is I make sure that the bobbin area is clean. So on this machine, you pop this plastic piece off, take your bobbin out, take the black bobbin casing out, and then you can use a small brush um, to kind of clean out in there. This is actually just a makeup brush that's really cheap. Um, you can use a paintbrush as well. So just make sure that area is nice and tidy before you turn your machine on and get started. I'm gonna put everything back together. And then pop my machine on. All 
All right, let me take a look and see what topping we have next to make on the list. It looks like mushrooms. So for that, I'm gonna put my mushroom colors in. For these pizza toppings, I like to use the same color bobbin thread as the top thread. And since I make so many of these, I actually use a giant spool. So I have this uh, little thread rack holder on the side of the machine and it works really well for using these uh, 550 meter spools or 5,000 depending on what manufacturer you go with on um, using these aside your machine. All right, so threads all loaded. Let's get our design up. Okay, there it is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my stabilizer going. I'll be right back. Okay, I have this all hooped and ready to go. I've taped the bottom piece on, and then for the top piece, I just use some temporary adhesive spray so that it doesn't bunch up or fall off or get stuck in any way. So let's go ahead and load this up. And we're ready to go. I interrupt this mushroom making experience for an issue with the multi-needle. My thread just broke and so I want to show you guys how I go about uh, restringing that thread if you want to know how to do this on a multi-needle. So the very first thing that I do is I push this close button here, hit my lock button and then perform a cut. That way, if there's any bobbin um, still attached to the bottom, it will cut that string for me. All right, the next step is going to be to actually restring this. So you have to remove your project from the machine. And this is something I have to do from a seated position. So I'm grabbing my sewing chair and I'm gonna readjust the camera so that you can see what I'm doing under the needle. And let me zoom in. Okay, so it is the number nine that broke. I am going to pull my thread down. There's a little tiny hole here on the plate that this needs to go through. So I'm gonna push it through that hole, grab it on the bottom. And then the multi-needle machines come with this little tool. I have no idea what it's called. It has a push here, which allows you to grab thread and pull it through. And this little notch here that will help you get the thread where it needs to go. I'm gonna push my needle button, which brings this little arm out and goes along the bottom side of the needle. This is the auto threader. What you wanna do is grab your thread, put it in the groove of your tool. It goes up and around this little tiny U-hook around the needle. It catches on this other side here, and then you bring it up, and there is a thread cutter right here. So there's a little arrow, I don't know if you could see it, where uh, you track the thread. After you get it in that position, you're gonna hit your needle button again, 
and it brings the thread through the needle and then up into the back here to secure it. So that's what you need to do to re-thread your needle. It looks like that our mushroom project is finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that from the hoop. You can see it made a lot of mushrooms. And I'm gonna go ahead and check out what our next one is that we have to make. Our next project is going to be the anchovies fish that are on the pizzas. For this, I like to use this heathered blue color. And this is gonna be a two color project. Now this particular machine does not cut jump stitches, so I'm gonna to have to trim all the jump stitches in between the two colors. Here is the first color. All right, now it is time to cut all of those little jump stitches. So I have jump stitches in between each fish. I don't have to cut those yet. I just have to cut these big long ones on both sides. This one, this one, let me flip it over. We're gonna do the same thing here. The next step in this project is to stitch the eyeballs on each fish. All right, we're gonna head back to the machine and finish our last step. I do wanna point out one embroidery tip is when you have a top load like this, you never wanna pull your thread back through. That can actually uh, mess up your timing and your tension and all of that. So you wanna trim here and then pull your thread from the bottom every single time. Now I do realize that sometimes that thread breaks and you have to pull it backwards, but that should be an extreme rarity when that happens. That is making a funny noise. I just wanna double check the bobbin. Oh, we have an issue with the bobbin. So maybe it got put in a little bit crooked. I'm gonna trim this off and I'm going to take that bobbin out and see if I put it in there crooked or upside down. All right, this thread is also caught. So I'm gonna pull this off. Here we go. All right, great, now we got it. I'm just gonna reset this in there. Put our cover back on. Make sure that our bobbin casing here is, uh, well, this is not the casing, the actual bobbin itself is not cracked or chipped in any way. Make sure that you're following the diagram and re-thread that. Now I need to back my machine up and start that step over. I am also going to re-thread our top thread just to make sure that there wasn't an issue threading that as well.
right, so time really ran short today and I did not have a chance to finish up that rainbow trout stuffy, so that will become tomorrow's project. I just wanna recap a little bit about what we've been working on in the studio today. We made some really cute stuffed Christmas uh, ornaments and then we made a whole variety of pizza toppings. Um, so I do have to still cut all of these out. And then um, I did have a third machine going, which I didn't show you because I have a project on there that has not been released to the public yet. I test for a designer. So uh, a little sneak peek, it is a felty set. It's super cute. Um, I can't wait to show you all what it's going to look like at a later date. Um, you're gonna be really excited about this one. So I know I am. Um, I gave you a couple tricks and tips along the way today. I know my thread broke on the multi-needle and then we had a little bobbin snaggle uh, on the PE770. So I, I hope that you take that knowledge and that you can apply it to your machines. Now, um, my next tutorial is, or work day is going to be finishing up that trout stuffy and then working on a couple other projects. So I hope Hope you enjoy this video if you do smash that like button subscribe to my channel share this video and until next time happy crafting